Hello, welcome to this lesson where I'm going to show you some common auto layout constraint errors and how to fix them. So you can add auto layout constraints in two ways. One is through the storyboard, like I'm about to show you. And the second way is programmatically through Swift code. I'm going to show you both ways, uh, but we're going to start with uh, the storyboard version. So first, let me just put a text field onto the view. And I'm going to add some constraints to it now by horizontally and vertically centering it in the container. Uh, and then I'm going to go here and select update frames. And you can see how it's so small because I don't have any height and width constraints to it. So I'm going to select that, click this icon right here, and I'm going to add a height and a width. So for width, I'm going to add 100 and for height, I'm going to put 40. So let's add these two constraints. Now let's update frames again. And now we have this text field that's in the center. Now sometimes because you have so many elements on the screen and you're adding so many constraints that you can accidentally add constraints that would conflict with the constraints that you have already added. So in other words, that element can't simultaneously satisfy all of the constraints that you've put on it. And remember, constraint is nothing more than a rule. So if you're, you know, having two rules here saying that it should be horizontally centered in the screen and vertically centered on the screen. And then I'm going to add another rule to say that it should be zero margin from the top and zero margin from the left. Let me add these two. So you can see now instantly there's all these red lines because on one hand, two of my constraints put the location of the text field up here. On the other hand, uh, the other two constraints put it in the middle here. So you see all these red lines indicating that there are, um, it's an error, conflicting constraints. You click this red button up here, and if you don't see this dock, there's a little button here in the lower left hand corner where you can hide and show this document outline. So if you click this little red guy right here, you can see that here are the conflicting constraints, and if you just run your mouse over it, you can see which ones they are and you can fix them. So what happens if I just run the app now, which I'm going to do to show you? Well, the system, in order to produce a layout, it's going to break some constraints in order to satisfy as many uh, constraints as it can. So you can see right here, there's a faint gray outline along the edges of the simulator. You you might have to look hard to notice it, but what it's done is it's broken my height and width constraint for the text field. So it's broken those two constraints so that it can adhere to the centering constraints as well as the left and top zero margin constraints. So by breaking the height and width constraint, it's just made my text box or my text field huge in order to satisfy those four constraints. The, or the two different positioning ones that were conflicting. So that's how it would work. And furthermore, in the console down here, you scroll all the way to the top, you can see the it tells you unable to simultaneously satisfy the constraints. And so that's your indication um, that something is wrong. So when you're laying out these constraints on the storyboard, it's, it's very easy to see what's wrong. Uh, or it's really easy to get an idea of, of what's happening because of all these red lines. And actually, an aside, if you don't see this console, what you want to do is make sure that you have this tab highlighted because you can close the console window like that. And if you don't have this bottom drawer at all, it's this top icon here. You can hide it and show it. Okay, so now let's go into programmatic constraints. So I'm just going to get rid of the text field here. So our view is empty and I'm going to save it. Then I'm going to go into the view controller. Here I've commented out all of this code, but I'm going to comment them back in. And I'm going to show you with programmatic constraints, you can also have errors. It's a little harder to uh, debug, but in my experience, it's usually, uh, at least for beginners, it's usually one or two different things that could be the problem.
So just remember when you have an element that you want to add constraints to, if you're adding size constraints, like I'm doing here, adding the height and width, you want to add the constraints to the actual element. So my text field, add constraints. Now if you're adding layout constraints here, be sure to add them to the parent container of the element that you want to position. So in this case, we want to position the text field, right? So these two constraints, we want to add it to the parent that contains the text field. In this case, it's the view controller's view. So self refers to the view controller because I'm writing this code inside viewcontroller.swift and view is the view property of the view controller, which uh, references the view. Uh, and you can see up here that I've placed the text field as a subview of the view. So in other words, the view is the parent container of this text field, right? So that's why I'm adding these positioning constraints to the view. Now, if you added these positioning constraints to the, uh, to the text field itself, you're going to get an error. I'll show you. So let's do my text field dot add constraints and I'm adding these positioning constraints. This is going to cause an error because I'm going to run it now because remember the uh, positioning constraints, you want to add it to the parent container of the element. So let's see what we have in the console here. We scroll all the way up and you can see it doesn't even highlight the line that uh, is wrong. So you can't always rely on this where it's crashing. So go into the console here, scroll all the way to the top. The view hierarchy is not prepared for the constraint. So that's your clue that indicates that that might be a problem. So check that your size constraints are being applied to the element and your position constraints are being applied to the parent container of the element. Okay, so let's stop this and let's undo so it will run again. So that's one common problem that I see. Another common problem is that uh, when you're adding these positioning constraints, even though you're adding it to the view, you know, the container, the parent of the element, you have to make sure that that element is actually added to the view first. So if I forget to add the element to the view, you can see up here, I've just created it. I've created some size constraints. Then I've added those size constraints to the text field element. And then I proceed to add these positioning constraints to the view. But nowhere have I actually put the text field element into the view. Uh, and because these two positioning constraints refer to uh, the text field for positioning within that view, it can't because the text field actually isn't in the view yet. Uh, so now if I run it, I'll show you what kind of error you get. So it crashes. Scroll up all the way up here in the console. The view hierarchy is not prepared for the constraint. Yep, you read that right. It's the same error message as the the other mistake that I just showed you. Right. So if you see a mistake like this, an error message, the view hierarchy is not prepared for the constraint, then you want to check two things. First of all, if you're positioning that element, I'm going to undo now, has that element been added to the container view or the, the view? And if you're adding positioning constraints, are you adding it to the parent container of that element? And if you're adding size constraints, are you adding it to the element itself? So those are the things to check when you get that, uh, that sort of error. And I see this uh, quite, it's quite common. So be sure to keep an eye out for it. I hope that was helpful to you guys and stay tuned for more helpful videos to help you resolve Xcode errors.